YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am out here sighting in my bow. And you're probably thinking, Allie, why the heck are you sighting in your bow? You just sighted in your bow not too long ago. Um, it is because I have new arrows and I will be hunting whitetail in Pennsylvania and Ohio and possibly other eastern states in just a couple weeks. So I'm out west right now and then next week I will be at a conservation conference in Jackson, Wyoming for like a week. I will be there for a long time but then after that, probably November 5th-ish, I'll be hunting whitetail with my bow in PA. So I'm very excited, but that requires some preparation, which normally, by the way, I'm horrible at preparing for the season. I always end up like <laughs> shooting my bow, you know, a couple days before and realizing that I need to retune my rest or blah, blah, blah. But I am ready for whitetail season in the East and I'm excited. So I'm prepared. I'm sighting in my bow tonight with my new arrows, which I will show you right now. Oh, so I cut these arrows myself and glued the inserts in. The inserts are not even inserts, now that I'm saying this out loud. They are outserts. So, take a look. These are, these are the, let's see, I believe they're called RIP. Yes, these are the Victory RIP, there you go, you can see them, arrows, and they are 400 spine. Then look at this here, so these are the outserts, which are so weird compared to anything that I've shot before, and I had to specially buy these field tips because the outserts are so large I had to buy new field tips and they're like <laughs> they're super short and chubby and make me giggle because I think they look funny but I have heard a lot of really great things about these arrows and I think they'll work so well for whitetail because they're a little bit thinner before I was shooting Easton full metal jackets five millimeters 400 spine and these are lighter they are thinner and I think they'll just be the perfect whitetail arrow, which is why I'm doing all of this right now. The rest, for whatever reason, needed some retuning. It needs to go a little bit back to the right, and then because the fletchings are hitting lower than the point, we need to move the rest down. That is pretty much perfect. So much so that I had to put on an extra piece, which I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna show you. So there we go. So you can see right here, this piece was in addition that I had to add on to move my sight more to the left um, because it was not tuning properly, but I've got it tuned up. We literally just shot it and got it going. So we are gonna shoot and yeah, should be fun. Listen to music. Sad story to tell you guys. <laughs> I dropped my phone. Hold on, you can't see because look at this. <gasps> Do you see the cracks in my phone? Oh my God. I completely shattered it and it's currently <laughs> being <laughs> held together by shipping tape so that I don't cut my fingers on the broken glass. I need a new phone case. So if you have recommendations for a phone case, I need one. But I'm putting on some music and right now I'm going with Casey Donahue Radio for Nick. Nick likes Casey Donahue. He's actually the one who showed him to me and at first, I did not like him, but he's grown on me a lot. If you have any other Texas country artists that you like, oh, comment below, please, because I'm into the Texas country music. Good stuff. Okay, let's get shooting. <laughs> we 
Well, I don't have my rangefinder. This always happens to me. It's because it's in my hunting pack. I was hunting recently and my binos, my bino harness and my rangefinder are in my hunting pack. So we're gonna switch gears and film a different video right now. <laughs> and then I'll probably do this at some point this week because I'm running out of time. So to be continued. And we're back with a rangefinder. It's the next day and I got a rangefinder. So let's do this. Because this arrow is so much lighter, if anything, it's gonna fly higher than my previous arrow did. So I think it will be safer to aim for the bottom target. I stacked up two Reinhardt targets <laughs> to give me maximum chance of keeping all of my arrows. So let's give this guy a whirl. I'm sore from yesterday. <laughs> Negative. So the arrow missed the target. I thought that I lost it and it looked like it was really far off, but it actually looks like it just went right through here and then down, maybe not. Either way, it was definitely to the left. So I'm gonna adjust my sight to move it back center and then we'll try again. No lost arrows. No lost arrows. Am I the only one that gets nervous sighting in your bow because it feels like you're gonna lose all your arrows? I need a big ass target because these two small targets are great for practicing, but we're sighting in. A little bit scary. That was not a great shot, but it looks like it's still left. So I think I might be in some deep doo-doo because I can't move the sight any farther left. It is already like I can loosen this guy here and then try to crank it further and that's as far as it goes. Even though there are a couple more hash marks, it's as far as it's letting me go. This might be a multi-video process because I'm not quite sure. But while we're on the topic of this site, I don't know if you can see, but this moves quite a bit. Something needs tightening, and I think that it is these very small screws on the side of, it's not the housing, but the side of the piece here that is causing it to be wiggly. Like you shouldn't be able to wiggle your sight like that. And I think that's partially why I had some trouble this season, like, I'm not kidding. I had to recite this recite, but just fine tune this site like two or three times throughout elk season. And yeah, like I'm hunting in the mountains and it's bound to bump off the stuff. So it's good that I was checking it regularly, but I think that this, like something needs done there. So I'm gonna try to find an Allen wrench that will fit that to tighten that. But regardless, I'm gonna play around and try and get this to move a little bit farther to the left. What a pain. The weird thing is I tuned my rest and it looked like everything was flying great. And now I get it out here to sight it in and it's flying so far to the left that I can't even adjust my sight that far. The arrow was clearly like not in line with everything. So I am adjusting my rest which I know might not be the right thing but I'm going to adjust it and then try to paper tune it again and kind of flip flop back and forth until I figure this out. Uh, I think that this is failed attempt number two and <laughs> I'm going to do some digging and research and then pick up next with whatever I find. So we're on to round number three. I made some adjustments on my bow that I'm very hopeful will contribute to a better flying arrow. Basically, I reworked the center shot a little bit and I fiddled with my rest a little bit, fiddled with the knocking point, just trying to get everything as perfect as it can be. So we are out here tonight 
and we've got the antelope skull boiling kind of boiling I think we're kind of out of propane it seems like that I don't have enough so I need to go get more but regardless it is slowly starting to cook just there's just like a little bit of like skin on her really I could probably get in there with a knife but I'm just gonna throw her in the pot let her boil away but I'm start shooting there's a lot of traffic out tonight anyways let's get to it oh yeah <laughs> sorry that was about to starting to boil a little bit it's pretty good first shot is going to be from 10 yards because I don't want to lose any arrows and this will hopefully give me an idea of where I'm at so let's try it cool that actually looked like it flew good didn't it sometimes whenever I release an arrow, at least whenever I was having trouble with my rest, like I don't know if you guys remember, but my rest wasn't all the way up at full draw, it was still like slightly cocked forward, so like this cable wasn't tight enough, and I was having really weird arrow flight because the arrow was hitting the drop away rest, which is not good, that's not what you want, but I could tell, basically is what I'm trying to convey, I could tell that the arrow flight was funny, and that actually looked okay. And it was high, but that's because I think I'm at my 20 yard mark. Or that means that I need to adjust the sight a little bit more. But regardless, left and right is not going too crazy. So I feel comfortable moving back a little bit. Also, another adjustment that we just made to the bow. I decreased the poundage just because I will not be using this for elk until next year. But I'm going to be using this on whitetail. So the poundage was as you guys probably noticed heavy for me like i was definitely struggling a little bit to pull it back but that's what i wanted i wanted it to be heavier for me when i was hunting elk but now that i'm going to hunt whitetail i'm much comfortable reducing my poundage again to something that's comfortable and easy for me to draw back Nick has told me horror, horror stories of him in the tree stand freezing his butt off and like barely being able to draw back his bow because he's so cold and he was just sitting there for hours and hours. I'm rambling like I always do, but poundage decreased a bit and we moved back to 20 yards. So let's do it. Closer. So I'm still shooting too far to the left, but my sight won't go any farther to the left. So I'm gonna play with my rest a little bit because I think that the tuning of my rest may actually be, you know, attributing to that. So I will move it just a little bit and hopefully that will solve the issue. Let's try it. Okay, so out of the three, this bottom one, I knew that I let go low. So this one for sure was not where it needed to be. These two though, they felt pretty good. They were just good, honest shots. So they're in the center bullseye. I really need just like a tiny little bright lime green or like hunter orange spot to put right in the center because it's, it's hard for me to pick out this tiny little spot, you know what I mean, where I want to hit within this spot, if that makes sense. So I think that this is a good sign. I will probably shoot a couple more rounds tonight. We are sort of running out of light, so we'll basically shoot until we run out of light. I will say though, I'm going to re-paper tune my rest tomorrow since I just played with it a little bit, which did Im drastically improve where my arrows were going, but I want to make sure that it is, you know, at least 
close to where it needs to be when paper tuning. Um, however, if you have any comments or suggestions on how things are going, please do comment below. I know that paper tuning isn't like the end all be all, it's just a good tool to use. So that's why I'm, I don't know, I'm a little bit uncertain of exactly how I'm gonna tune the bow from here. But regardless, things are improving and I really just gotta keep shooting. Like I've been hunting with a rifle and you know, during hunting season, it ends up being a lot harder to practice, at least in my experience. But that's not an excuse. So gotta keep practicing and I will obviously share that with you guys. But let's shoot a couple more rounds. That felt like a really great shot, although I can't see where it is. It looks like it's high and a little bit to the right. Okay. So after shooting these arrows all day today and yesterday, trying to get this bow sighted in, I've gotta say now that the bow is functioning a little bit better than it was earlier, I am really impressed with how the arrows are flying. I feel like they're fast. I like the way that they're flying so I'm excited to continue to use these really for a long time I was shooting the Easton full metal jackets and although they were great I felt like those things packed a punch um, you know they were also a lot heavier so it's interesting I think that group was better let's go look I have not shot in this low light before you probably can't tell because the camera makes it look amazing but if it can auto you see that it's dark it's getting really dark now and yeah tighter groups but anyways we're pretty much out of light but here is the final group um, this one I knew that I let go a little bit funny so those two are a hell of a lot tighter now we're still not like perfectly in the center I'm gonna play around with my bow and we'll see how that improves this but overall I'm happy that my groups are getting tighter even just in this one little practice session and although this is not exactly where I want to be I feel like I say this every time I film, film an archery video it's like it's not what I it's not where I want to be but um, I mean, you guys know how it is. Sometimes it can be hard to practice as much as you want. I'm trying to improve just like all of you guys, but that is it. That is going to end this. Someone is shooting something and it is weird. Anyways, <laughs> so that is it. I'm going to end the video here, you guys. I will be back out here probably tomorrow and the next day and the next day at least for one if not two shooting sessions per day just to get myself back on track like there's no excuse gotta get back to it but i will definitely share that with you guys so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one